Um, Tracy McPherson, as uh, Melvin mentioned, is here with me today. Our panel, as Melva demonstrated in the instructions, and we'll try to address them throughout. At the very end, we have some polls that we want to go over and get your feedback on some ideas that we would have with um, the new national expert ATTC, and we want your feedback. So we hope that you will stay with us to the very end, and we will be done right on time. Okay, so welcome again to the webinar and to the National Screening Brief Intervention and Referral to Treatment Addiction Technology Transfer Center. Let's try to say that 15 times in a row. <laughs> so um, today our goals for this webinar are to discuss the goals of the National ESPER at ATTC, define a little bit in just broad terms what is ESPER at the individual and systems level as, and as they relate to our National ESPER ATTC goals, and then update on any National ESPER projects and resources um, that we know of. There's a lot out there, and I, I noticed from our registration list we have a lot of great experts and ESPER out there. So our list is certainly not exhaustive. We just wanted to give people who may be newly exposed to ESPER, because we have a variety of people on this webinar, some people expert at ESPER and some people completely new to the ESPER concept. So we want to show you some national uh, projects and resources. And then, as I mentioned, ask you what you think via polls, um, poll questions, and then, again, through the chat. We can even open the phone lines and have a discussion at the end, hopefully. So uh, with that, we'll get started with the first goal. So we are a national ESPER, but I wanted to back up a little bit and focus a uh, on what addiction technology transfer centers are um, and what our funding stream is. We are funded by the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. And I'm going to go out of the PowerPoint and take you to our website to show you. Uh, is everybody getting this OK? Melva or Tracy? some feedback there. Yes, I can see. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. OK. Well, uh, here's our website of the Addiction Technology Transfer Center Network. And we are comprised of 10 regional centers and four specialty focus area ATTCs. And everything you want to know about us is on our website. So I'm just going to take us to find a regional center and show you the national map. Uh, it is interactive, so you can click on the regions and see these regions are aligned to the 10 HHS regions, and that is new for the ATTC, so there has been some shifting of states. And then we have our national focus area ATTCs, and our web page pages are not up, but they will be up shortly. Um, besides the national ESPER ATTC, we have three other focus areas, one on rural telehealth, one on Hispanic Latino, and one on Native American, um, Alaska Native, and the uh, focus area. So um, hopefully you'll be on our listservs going forward if you aren't already, and you'll get information and announcements as more information is loaded onto the ATTC website. But um, for the time being, this is our uh, web page, and it really is facilitating the new regions. But there are plenty of information from our previous grantee years that is still loaded on our website from our uh, previous grant cycle. And you can um, click here on our website and attain that information if you're very familiar with the ATTCs. So uh, we've retained the best of the old and the new. OK, let me go back. Again, we are funded by SAMHSA. And we are working with uh, HHS regions and uh, other regional centers in a collaborative way. And we, our goal is to work as a network to address addictions issues throughout the country and all sectors of society. And uh, our primary emphasis is the addictions workforce, but with, especially with our focus area ATTC on ESPER, we are broadening that to include behavioral health, primary care, um, even criminal justice and CYF settings. We'll talk about that a little bit later. So um, because I knew that our audience was so diverse, we are now not only just communicating in what IRETA's uh, listserv used to comprise, which was our previous region, but we are also collaborating with NORC and the EAP initiative. 
sending our announcements out broadly through the entire uh, technology transfer center network, I knew that there are some people who uh, did not know anything about SBIRT. So we thought we would start with uh, the, what is SBIRT. So Tracy? Sure. Thank you, Holly. And yeah, this is such a, a, a wonderful opportunity really to bring together uh, many of the folks that you've been working with through the ATTCs and this whole new world, I think, that uh, NORC and uh, the big initiative and the workplace behavioral health professionals and, and uh, EAP professionals that I've been working with, it's a great opportunity to them, for them to learn about the vast amount of resources all over the United States. Uh, it's not just this, our, the national expert ATTC that we're going to be able to expose them to, but getting them familiar with the, the regional ATTCs in their geographic area. So I think this is a wonderful opportunity to bring everybody together. And so the big initiative and NORC are, are, um, are really thrilled to have this opportunity to, to work with um, you and, and the ATTCs. And uh, we, we are similar uh, in the fact that many are new to the big initiative and SBIRT and ATTCs. And we talk in these acronyms. And it's just helpful for us to understand you know, what, what is SBIRT. And I think we will have a lot of uh, opportunities to learn what does SBIRT mean and, and when you implement it, what are all the ingredients that go into it. But at a very high level, um, just to, so we can all be on sort of the same page, you can think of SBIRT, screening, the BI brief intervention, RT for referral to treatment, as a comprehensive integrated public health approach to delivery of early intervention, and uh, treatment services for people with substance use disorders and those who are at risk for developing them. Uh, the wonderful thing about SBIRT is that it's very mobile. And what you'll find is that it's been delivered um, and developed mostly out of uh, trauma. Uh, it's been delivered in ED and primary care and uh, community health centers and a, a variety of um, medical settings. And what we we're, we're also have, have been doing um, at NORC and the big initiative is, is using what we've learned, the best of what's come out of those arenas, to help those in the workplace behavioral health space, employee assistance programs, um, the social workers and counselors, the addiction professionals that are out there in the field who, uh, re who get a referrals um, from workplaces um, to expand effort into those kinds of settings and, and programs. And so um, we are, uh, have been exploring um, really that translating research into practice into um, uh, telephonic and workplace EAP programs, occupational health, and others. So there's so many opportunities, and it's very portable. Um, and so uh, this is a great opportunity to sort of have expert wherever people are, whether they're coming into the medical settings or they're coming to work. Uh, we want to be there where they are, where we can intervene early and, um, and prevent uh, more severe consequences, um, health, uh, emotional, financial, social, and so forth. And so that really is sort of the overall uh, arching theme of, of what is expert. And then there's some more specific uh, goals of ESPER on the next slide, if you'd like to advance there. It's really to encourage healthcare providers and other entities. And when I use the phrase healthcare providers, I'm really thinking a broad range of health professionals um, in, in uh, the medical setting as well as in the behavioral health setting. So we've talked a little bit about the medical settings. And you have physicians and nurses and health educators and fear advocates. You have employee in the workplace behavioral health space. You have um, uh, the social workers and licensed marriage and family therapists and addiction professionals and paraprofessionals uh, uh, and all, all the way uh, through a continuum of the licensed professionals. And it's really about encouraging that real broad range of, of health care, behavioral health care practitioners, to screen routinely using a validated tool like the, uh, the audit, which I'm sure we'll be learning a lot about in some of the future webinars, or the assist tool. Uh, and, and then to provide uh, advice um, 
uh, providing feedback around what the what the screening score means, and helping the uh, professional understand when you're interpreting these screenings, what level of risk and what's the level of intervention that's most appropriate for that level of risk. And, and perhaps that may be also uh, referring to someone or providing even on site some brief counseling um, that may uh, be most appropriate at that level of risk. And this can be used for, um, for both alcohol use and, and drug use. And then one of the other aims of SBIRT is to influence risky behavior patterns and reduce exposure to negative consequences of misuse. And this can be a range of things from, from patterns of use consumption, levels of consumption. It could be behaviors around not uh, getting behind the wheel of a car or driving uh, in a vehicle with someone who has been under the influence. So a full range of, of uh, risks. Um, both to uh, the individual and, and uh, the environment around them. And then the other goal of SBIRT is around the, particularly around the RTPs. And I don't, I think, I like to think of referral to treatment here as you're, as we're saying here, it's really a linkage, a warm handoff, delivering people to that next level of care rather than just giving them a piece of paper. And really that's linking them um, so that they can get the level of care that they need um, it, from the broad range, both in health care and behavioral health care, and connecting them to substance abuse um, professionals and special, um, specialty areas, specialty practitioners. And then really to follow up, I hope, um, as a goal of SBIRT is to follow up with people to support um, uh, risk reduction and, and, and recovery goals and following up them over the time to sustain uh, a healthy lifestyle. So that, just I hope, will give you a sort of a, uh, in a nutshell, of, uh, about SBIRT. And I look forward to uh, working with folks to share more about all of the ingredients and breaking all of these down uh, in the coming year. Well, thank you, Tracy. Um, very well said. Um, we wanted to drill down a little bit closer to the goals of the, our particular ATTC grant. And here uh, we have outlined uh, the three goals that we submitted for our RFA, which is to serve as the national subject matter expert and key resource for SBIRT. And uh, hopefully as we get through some of the activities that we have planned in our first year and through our collaboration, for example, right now collaborating with NORC, you'll see that we are trying to convene all of the great national experts in the various sectors that we're seeing SBIRT into one ATTC so that it can be a resource for others. We know that, um, and we'll talk a little bit later about how the states have been funded for many years, many states, but not all 50 states. We know that health systems are using SBIRT, but not all health systems. So we want to be that one place that people come to to get resources on SBIRT, no matter where you would like to implement it. Uh, our second goal of broadening um, the scope of implementation practices and system transformation for SBIRT through a SBIRT suite of services. Um, well, that's a lot to say that we would like to convene um, many resources into a packaged product, one portal, for example, of information through the National ATTC Network webpage where you can get to other web resources. Um, to help with implementation primarily at systems levels, but um, to look at barriers or commonalities, to share information that others have learned to those who are wanting to start implementing SBIRT through the suite of services, but also, also through training and technical assistance activities. So we are, you know, we did aim pretty high, um, and we'll talk in a couple slides about some specifics that address this goal as well. And then uh, to develop strategies to expand the workforces. I think, Tracy, you may use many specific examples of how these workforces are different, but they are connected and how we can, SBIRT can connect them. And we would like to work to ensure the consistent application of SBIRT model and all of the wonderful things that we are learning about SBIRT through the service projects that SAMHSA's funding and also through NIDA and NIAAA's research protocols to ensure fidelity and sustainability of SBIRT um, throughout systems and, and any place that people will, will be using SBIRT. 
Okay, so let's look at some of our activities that relate to these, those three goals. We are going to be conducting technical assistance activities such as implementation and co you know, access to implementation and coaching experts, uh, directly working on implementation activities with systems and um, even with uh, states, uh, regional centers through the network or larger systems in EAP or the health setting. Um, we are holding learning communities. Two of the great learning communities already exist and that through our collaboration with NORC, we hope to expand that so others can join the big initiatives and Tracy will talk about those um, with our super users in these systems and the hospital initiative. So, um, and then we'll develop others that seem relevant to advancing ESPER as needed, but those are the first two that are already up and running and that we want to support to continue and also grow them because they have uh, made a lot of inroads from learning from each other. So uh, you'll get a little more specifics about those towards the end. Some training events. Um, in this year one, we do plan a webinar series for you know knowledge raising events um, twice monthly. Uh, we're we're going to continue with our webinar Wednesdays really teasing out many, many, many subjects on ESPER. This is our first one. It's an overview of what we are. Our, um, our next two topics have been identified. We're going to be looking at um, the pharmacologic makeup of the four broad substances and why knowing about substances helps for, to make a better ESPER intervention. And then we're going to start looking critically at all of the screens that are available, validated and reliable screens. Uh, we're going to look at the brief intervention methodologies, methodologies through a series of webinars. So, you know, webinar training events are not the sole composition of our training activities, but we are going to start out with these knowledge building sessions um, and hopefully in tandem work with some of the learning communities as, as needed. And then um, the website on the national network, I mentioned that in our goals and and showed you a little bit of it, but we look to that to be a portal for expert activities across the multiple sectors that we've already discussed, EAPs, hospitals, and we do know that people are looking at it in other systems like criminal justice systems, children, youth, and family systems. So um, we hope to be that one place, one stop shopping, so to speak, for everything the, all the wonderful materials that already exist, those that are coming out through other initiatives and collaborations, um, and have that on that portal. And then the registry of trainers, that's a, just another example. Um, many of the regional center ATTCs have been working on ESPERT and have excellent trainers that we are pulling together and we'll have a registry so that people could, you know, um, connect with those trainers directly and know who the experts are to get expert up and running in their system, agency, or whatever setting. Uh, I don't know, Tracy, was there anything you wanted to add about any of the things I touched on, learning communities, or? Well, I, yeah, we'll talk about the learning communities, but the registry of trainers, I think, is going to be terrific. I think that's one of the things that we hear, uh, you know, the kinds of calls I get is, who's a trainer who can do this in that area, in the ED, in the south, or in the north? West, and I think we're going to have a terrific registry of trainers. I know that through our hospital uh, initiative and through our big initiative, we have uh, provided some wonderful uh, group of trainers that we're looking forward to, to working with. So when people are, are interested, if you don't see something that's specific to ED or specific to uh, reimbursement and billing and integrating it into your um, your electronic health records. You know, there's something specific. I would encourage people to to ask and make sure we identify who's a, who's um, a, a real good resource in that specific area because I'm sure other people will be asking that same question. Very good. Yes, thank you. I see we have a couple questions, so let me just go through my next slide. And then we, maybe we can answer a few more questions. So if people have burning questions on their mind, we love questions. We like to interact with you guys. It's weird to be talking to my computer screen only. So I saw a question come in, Tracy, in the question panel. I'll go through my next slide, and then we'll take this question and then continue on. So if you guys have things, if you have thoughts, it doesn't have to be a question. It could be a reflection on something we've said, an idea, a thought, and you want to share that, please go ahead and do that in the chat or questions panel as well. So uh, what we're going to do, um, next slide here, let's see. 
Um, here's some more activities continued. We do plan on doing a national expert needs assessment. We are trying to develop a needs assessment with the help of um, people who've been implementing expert for many years and through our advisory board. And we hope that over five years, we will show a lot of concrete process and outcome measures through our needs assessment and also a national strategic plan, which is a little bit further down on the slide. Um, we are, and we touched on this a little bit too, talking about workforce development activities. That is a, a key goal for all addiction technology transfer centers. And so we are going to do targeted, um, you know, educational and implementation technical, technical assistance activities for specific groups like addictions professionals. What is their role with SBIRT? How can they work in an SBIRT environment? doctors, nurses, social workers, et cetera, criminal justice professionals, possibly probation parole officers. Uh, so we uh, have the goal of workforce development and are going to continue to work on that as a training, a technology transfer um, training center. And then we are going to attempt to work with some of the other key collaborators that are working on these um, as well, or thinking about working on them, a development of practice standards, going back to ensuring some fidelity and sustainability of practice. And through our advisory board, we hope to develop the National Strategic Plan, which will inform building sustainable business models through systems and finance models of um, experts use. So those are some of our activities. Tracy, did you want to say anything else before I read the question from the panel here? have anything at this point. Let me let me just open the question panel box a little bit so I can read the whole thing. Okay, let's see. Um, let me go up here. I appreciate the feedback. Thank you guys. Um, we have somebody from Robert Wood Johnson who was sharing some of their um, experience with geriatric mental health and the Geriatric Addictions Program, which is a community outreach program utilizing risk reduction model. Um, let's see here. Uh, is Espert working on a geriatric community approach for already existing epidemic with this population and the boomers coming? Very good question. We do, I do know off the top of my head that um, there have been state expert programs, and I'm sure there's more, and I know some people on this webinar are way more expert about this than I am, so if you have a more specific answer, please put it in the chat. But the Florida, uh, state Florida program had developed their expert and targeted that population, and so there's a Bright, the Florida Bright program is what it was called, and that is an expert curriculum that is out there that could be looked at for your situation and specific. I know there's others. There's an ATTC course that talks about screening from the Pacific, um, or from the South, uh, yes, Pacific Southwest ATTC that I can show you. So definitely, that is an important population, and there are some existing resources. Those are two off the top of my head that I think about, but I'm sure there are others um, out there. Tracy, did, did you yeah. want Yeah, to... Yes, in fact, in part of the, um, the big initiatives curriculum that, that we have developed in collaboration with six other professional associations, one of the things that we, we did is to, to begin to, um, you know, uh, educate and make people aware of how this, how ESPER can be used with older adult populations. And we did develop um, a, a special uh, chapter on that, and that really refers people to some other resources and other people who, like you say, are, are more expert in that area. But I do think that we would have the opportunity to connect um, uh, folks with those people um, as, as part of what we're going to do so they can get uh, mm -hmm. the see what the models that have worked well with those populations and the tools that have worked best with those populations and they can use those in their own settings. Very good. Okay, so I got a chance to, I have to admit, and I apologize, I can't completely make my phone silent. Uh, I did get a chance to look at some of the other questions, so I do think this is a good time for us to address these questions, Tracy, and then we'll continue on. Okay. Um, I thank you, Dr. Richard Brown. I know you're on the webinar, and it's exciting to have somebody of your level of expertise in implementing expert on the webinar. That uh, in Wisconsin, you were stating that you found many 
of the healthcare settings in Wisconsin has done an outstanding job, as many of the state um, expert grantees have in implementing expert in large healthcare settings and health systems. They're interested in screening and intervention for a wide variety of risk, risks and problems like tobacco, depression, obesity, rather than just alcohol and drugs. So he, uh, Rick, Dr. Brown asked, will the National Expert ATDC support technology transfer on these broader BSI services rather than just expert? Um, you know what, I hope, I think that we will. We have some experience personally at IRETA working with that um, at the School of Nursing and some of our HRSA projects. It's a, you know, it's sort of like once people are thinking about this, they start to think about other, you know, settings or other risk factors, as you mentioned, and problems. But um, we don't have any specific concrete plans in year one to do it, but I can say, you know, pretty confidently that it's a, it's a natural and that we will progress to that. And, you know, we're definitely open to maybe what you guys are seeing is we should be progressing faster because that's what the feedback you're getting after implementing SBIRT for alcohol and drug use is telling us. And we hope to be able to do that and lead, um, you know, utilize, collect, and perhaps lead people to resources that would help them to do many of those things, not just alcohol and um, drug screening, but tobacco, using BI for tobacco, use depression, obesity, as you mentioned. Um, Gracie, did you have anything to that, add to that? Yeah, I, I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, uh, it really makes a lot of sense to me, um, and I hope that we will will expand naturally, I, um, like, like you're saying, and I think there are some terrific folks out there doing this work. Um, and resources that if people are, are eager to sort of get started with with focusing on tobacco uh, and alcohol and they want to sort of right out of the gate do that, we can connect folks with, with those people who are doing that. There's some uh, wonderful activity going on with the uh, Espert Colorado site, uh, mm -hmm. healthcolorado.org. They have some wonderful um, guidelines and protocols around fetal alcohol syndrome and working around um, tobacco and their collaboration with Health Teamworks and they've done some terrific work and there are others I'm sure that are on this call um, that we could connect folks with. Um, so absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was just saying absolutely. I, I'm certainly on board in supporting, um, supporting that. And it does seem like a very natural progression and many people are advanced and so we should probably make that move with them to think more broadly about other applications of SBIRT. Well, how about we address a few more questions from the question panel, then we'll pick up from the PowerPoint and go back to the questions and some are comments. So I really appreciate everyone's feedback. I just want to make sure we get both the comments and, and get to the uh, finish out some of the content. Uh, so here's an easy question. Can we get a copy of these slides and share them? Absolutely. We're going to send them to you at the end of the webinar with a link to our survey evaluation. Please let us know what we could change about this presentation and then um, you'll have the slides as well. Uh, the next question, they want to hear more about how you will implement the learning communities. Um, well, right now our plan is to, most of them will be, well, the two that we mentioned are already up and running, but Tracy will talk about them a little bit more. We'll show you the websites because if you're in those two settings, you, you can just join them now. Uh, is that correct, Tracy? That's right. That's right. And so uh, we'll, other learning communities will have to see how they would go. I mean, they will probably either be like um, profession specific or system specific. But for the EAP and the hospital initiatives, um, I would suggest that if you're not a part of either one of those, that you join them. And we'll talk about that website. Uh, but overall, if the question is how will we do them, we'll probably ba base them electronically. And if they're of intense magnitude and it involves technical assistance, depending on if it's a system of users or uh, something of that nature, then you know, we would do on site as well. And the last question is, uh, is that we'll take just for now, is there anything developed for high school counselors to use SBIRT? I know that um, Boston has a great curriculum for adolescent SBIRT um, that's on their state website. And I know that a Massachusetts website, um, there, are, there is a movement for um, SBIRT in school systems. SAMHSA's funded SBIRT, you know, at the uh, university health systems, but 
uh, school-based health care systems are looking at it, and we know that in New York there are some example sites um, that are implementing ESPER in a school setting, and we get requests about it and do training for um, counselors, so that's a very good question. And, um, you know, and it's a totally appropriate population as well. Yeah, and there are a number of, um, you know, if folks are working with older, the older adolescent, young adult group in the college, you know, a few years back, NIAAA had a, a very large effort called the, the College Drinking Initiative, and so that's out there, and there are some frameworks, expert frameworks that have been used in those settings. And then there are some, if you're working, for example, with faculty and staff assistance programs within uh, school systems, university systems, um, there has not been as much work done, but there, some are exploring uh, the adaptation of it for uh, generally the, the uh, young adult population um, if you're over in the workplace, uh, the workplace EAP side. So I think that we will be seeing more things um, come out in that direction. Absolutely, and there's some really good foundational things already out there that people could utilize in those settings. So good question. We'll point you to that. So I'm going to take a break from the questions for now, but keep them coming in. We'll address as many as we can, and those that we don't get to, we will. Um, we can download this chat log. We can address specific questions and answer people and or share comments with the group. Um, we just have to get some lead time to comp compose all that together. So uh, we t also set a goal was to look at expert at the individual level and the systems level. So it's, a, you know, this is very basic, but I think we also should focus ourselves that really expert is a service for each person that comes in and has a screen and gets feedback as a result of their screen. And even if the screen is low risk or no risk, we should use that as an opportunity for health education and wellness to tell people and reaffirm they're making good choices about substances. In a healthcare setting, you can make that health connection quite easily. Um, in a school setting, you can make that connection about their, you know, maybe social consequences of use or being, you know, in an affirmating way. Um, but the focus really is on each person. So. It's hard to keep that in mind when you think about how we're going to implement, how we're going to score the screen, give people feedback. It is an individualized approach. Of course, it's based on the use of motiva motivational interviewing techniques. And so really, we think about and worry about for long-term sustainability, um, peoples, whoever's implementing or giving feedback, um, utilizing the expert approach, that they're using engaging techniques, they're meeting patients where they are, using the principles of motivational interviewing, founding it in the stages of change. So meeting people where they are in that process. And all for the goal of positive health outcomes for those who may be using or using in a risky or harmful way. And for those who need help, have it, helping them to access that hopefully earlier so there's less consequences. That's the heart of SBIRT, um, and we, you know, we can't stray from that when we worry about coding and billing and EHRs and all that. That is very important, but we have, it has a very individualized component to SBIRT. Uh, so that's what our thoughts were about that overall. Uh, Tracy, did you want to add anything? Or? No, I think, I, I think that we always have to, as we're thinking about really systems change, we can never lose sight at the end of the day that it's about it's about the individuals, about the clients and the patients and the people that we work with every day, um, and we can never lose sight of that. So, We always want to shine a light on the heart of the intention is to really meet people where they are and give them the help that they need. So uh, speaking of systems level, though, we can't also ignore this side because our intention might be at the individual level, but we have to look at how we're going to help people to get what the help they need when they need it, um, because our ultimate goal is to have positive outcomes that are better for individuals, but also for health systems and communities. Um, and that's why expert seems like when you, when you go to an expert training or if you take this uh, one of the expert online courses or whatever, you will say, well, it seems easy enough, but there's lots of little nuances when you look at whatever system you're trying to implement it in that really cannot be ignored or have to be addressed so that you have the best chance to 
implement something that is sustainable and has some cost savings for the system as well. Because one of the benefits of SBIRT is that we're treating people before there are longer term consequences or costlier consequences, personal and societal. Um, Tracy? Anything? Yeah, and I, and I would, add, would add to that that you know, we think of systems, there are many different systems, and, and I think about on the, the workplace side, employers and uh, the em employee assistance programs and managed behavioral health care companies that provide these services, these are all systems, and, and working with them to, to, to integrate um, the best practice around SBIRT and to look at the value that they're, that they're providing, are their services, what are the outcomes of their services, are, they, are their workforces, are the clients they're serving, are they improving, is their productivity better. Um, there are many different system level outcomes um, when you're working in those spaces that are also um, very important, which do impact even at that more societal system level. But I think there may be folks who want to focus on how do I improve the, the health and well-being and reduce the risks of the employee populations that I serve. And I think that's a, a good systems level approach um, as well. Yeah. I mean, obviously, we're going to spend a lot of um, some of our implementation side in the you know, hospital systems, primary care systems. We know a lot about that through the SBIRT SAMHSA grants, um, but there's other, you know, system issue. Whenever it's a school, it's an agency, an addictions agency, a primary care clinic, there are systems issues that have to be looked at at the outset when you want to implement any practice or change, but as well as SBIRT. Mm -hmm. So we won't belabor that more, but you can look for this as a topic area that we will be addressing pretty heavily in a webinar series through our, you know, website, putting together resources, and of course addressing it in a strategic plan. So um, let's look at some of the national projects and the websites real quickly, because we did, I don't know, Trace, if you were able to look at any of the questions coming in the panel, but we've got a lot of good participation that I want to keep on. Okay, well, um, I'll just, uh, you take the lead and... Either yeah. answer questions or we can go forward. Yeah, let's go forward with these two and then we'll get some questions and then our polls. Okay. So, um, I was going to start by talking about the state grantees and medical residencies uh, grantees that have been um, funded by SAMHSA for over a decade now. And a wealth of information, ha I will show your website in the, their website in a minute, has been gathered through those initiatives. Um, many of them sustainable after the funding goes away, and some that were not be able to sustain after the funding went away. So we've learned quite a bit, and that work um, is published, that work is on the internet, and we will shine a, a light on all of the wonderful resources that are, have come out and are currently coming out of the funded cohorts of states and medical residencies. Uh, Tracy, do you want to talk about the next two? Yeah, so the next two, the big initiative, which stands for the Brief Intervention Group, um, that's a, a group that uh, Eric Gopterud and I have uh, been leading for probably, I don't know, three plus years. And uh, we initially launched this uh, looking at the workplace as a learning collaborative. There really weren't uh, many places where work place um, broadly, behavioral health practitioners, employee assistance programs, thought leaders, um, operations and system specialists, quality improvement folks, um, health and productivity uh, uh, researchers, uh, managed behavioral health care companies, and of course the professional clinical associations, where they could really sort of come together and talk about how do we translate research into practice, how do we translate uh, what's been developed in the medical setting around SBIRT, and how does that work in these other workplace-related environments. And so this learning collaborative was launched as a way to bring everybody together uh, on a routine basis. And in the past, we've had uh, monthly uh, one-hour conference calls. Uh, we have um, recently been uh, doing quarterly conference calls. Um, 
partly because some folks want to participate in the in the other initiative, the hospital <laughs> initiative, uh, because that's sort of a different focus. But it really is a place where you can share ideas, share resources, you can link with people, you can link about you know what are the things, the challenges and barriers that you're facing, or what are the successes you've had, and you want to sort of mentor or 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 link to someone to help you with those implementation issues, the systems issues, the training issues, the evaluation issues. And then also facilitating through, and we have a closed listserv um, that we communicate uh, with, and Misty Story, who is, uh, um, is uh, at, at NADAC, has been a, a close partner with the big initiative, um, both individually and, and NADAC as an organization, and she manages um, to the communication, so you, we can share things that really learning collaboratives can use, you know, uh, resources and things you might not ordinarily uh, know about. So we try to take the time, energy, and effort to sort through a lot of what's out there and to push out targeted information that you can use today or tomorrow, if at all possible. And then we use the link, a closed LinkedIn site to facilitate some communication. And then we, in the past, have found opportunities where we have met. So if, um, if the field of EAP is going to the ESNA conference or the EPA conference, we want to go there where the people naturally convene to give you an opportunity to meet face-to-face -face and talk and share and, and that sort of thing. So that's, you know, we are certainly open to ideas of how do we uh, foster an even better learning collaborative. Um, but that's the way we've done it for the EAP big initiative. And the hospital effort initiative, we have uh, done something uh, similar, um, mostly through teleconference, um, uh, and it brought together hospital uh, folks. These are uh, both the leaders, um, like folks on this call, who have uh, been working in ED and, and trauma and nursing and clinical associations and quality and all of that, bringing them together to focus around implementation in hospital systems. So those are the two ones that we've led. And um, uh, like you said, Holly, you know, maybe there'll be other opportunities uh, to expand uh, to another learning collab. But right now, these are ready, available, and operating. And we welcome folks to join. So the website um, here, um, we have, we will actually show you a web, the website link on the next, on the next slide so that you can see where to join. Um, so yeah, we're going to do that very shortly. But let's just touch really briefly. We also know that other f uh, federal agencies are looking at ESPER. We just mentioned a few here. HRSA looking and working on ESPER, I should say, not just looking at ESPER. Um, HRSA, the Health Resources Services Administration, is funding ESPER um, service, uh, like implementation um, through this uh, uh, nursing education grants. They, this is certainly not exclusive list. This is just what I know of. But um, they are, you know, we are currently funded to work on ESPER and have been. There was a question on the questions panel about um, undergrads and in graduate settings. So HRSA has been addressing that in the nursing workforce um, for both undergraduate nursing and graduate nursing programs. Um, so. And also HRSA has, and we're going to show their website, the Center for Integrated Health uh, Services. So um, we will talk about the National Council's initiative, the SAMHSA HRSA initiative, as well as another one that addresses that. And they are definitely addressing ESPER, and there are many resources attached to that. Um, Tracy, did you want to say something brief about NIDA and NIAAA? Well, uh, you know, NIDA and NIAAA have been uh, strong supporters of, of ESPERT um, research and training and, of course, the drug um, ESPERT demonstration projects funded by NIDA, which um, are really helping to move um, our, our science forward. And NIAAA, um, the same in, for alcohol ESPERT. And of course, the, the magnificent resources they put out around rethinking drinking and some of the online training video series and the clinician's guide. Um, I, every training I do, I always have rethinking drinking. And, and so um, it's just a terrific resource. So they've been really tremendous, these agencies and others. There are others uh, like the VA and so forth who have um, equally contributed to this. Yeah. 
Well, let's just take a quick tour of the website. Time is really going by. I, I was wondering if we were going to get out early. We'll get out right on time, though, I promise. But let me go ahead and show some of these websites. Obviously, this, that list we just showed you and this list is not exhaustive at all. There are so many more resources out there. Making our ATTC portal important, I think. So we are going to look at some several of these resources and when you get the slides, you'll have the links. Um, let's see, let me pull this up. So here we'll start with the SAMHSA. Oh, I see there's a little delay. There we go. A SAMHSA, the SAMHSA website, and you can learn about their grantees. You can learn about coding for SBI reimbursement. There's an excellent white paper SAMHSA put out talking about um, the very question that was asked about um, the efficacy of uh, the SBIRT model and other things besides alcohol and drugs, tobacco, um, depression, and anxiety. So that's interesting. And then there's a, the implementation guide for trauma centers, another wonderful resource. Um, Tracy, I'm just going to go through the ones I was going to touch base and then I'll backtrack to that. This other website is uh, the SAMHSA HRSA Center for Integrated Health Solutions website. They have a, a web page just dedicated to SBIRT, wonderful resources there um, that link for uh, not just the SBIRT, the model, but also motivational interviewing, trauma, pain management. Uh, that's one of a resource we wanted to highlight. Um, the ATTC network through, as I mentioned, many of the regional centers have been doing phenomenal and outstanding work on SBIRT for many, many years. So uh, some of the outcomes from that, meaning uh, they're on the regional websites as well. Here's an online course, which is a very good beginning overview, self-paced course on SBIRT. If you're starting right from the beginning, this is a nice place to go. Then there's the World of SBIRT blog that's um, put out there that has very interesting information and timely. And let's see, we talked about, oh, well, do you want to start with the big initiative, Tracy, or the hospital initiative? Yeah, so the, the learning, collab right, learning collaborative, like I said, was sorting through and trying to make things available that are really targeted that people are asking for in the collaborative. We have two websites. One is for the hospital expert initiative. This is the website. has an incredible amount of information around the joint commission measures, billing and reimbursement. We have lots of training resources. Um, recently done in archive for you and available for free. We have some toolkits of implementation guides for very specific settings. Uh, all sorts of wonderful things. If you want to be a part of the big initiative for the hospital expert group, you can click join now and it'll take you to a, a page that'll allow us to link you into our closed listserv and you would uh, receive email about how to join those uh, monthly conference calls. The other uh, expert site, the big initiative, EAP, workplace expert site, has a similar look and feel. So, um, you, so you've, uh, you'll know by the top that it's, it's the, the lead-in will say leading EAP vendors, businesses, and so forth. That's our, our website in, in that workspace and equally has uh, a little bit of history on us as well as lots of resources, webinars. Um, training materials, things that you can take out and use in your own settings and, and more about the curriculums we've developed in, in combination with the professional associations. And then I would say, let's see, those are the two for the learning collaborative. Another, um, the Improving Health Colorado uh, site, this is the Esper Colorado site that I'm, I'm quite fond of. I think they have some tremendous resources. If you aren't familiar with it, uh, you can um, access many guidelines and implementation protocols that around tobacco and fetal alcohol syndrome and prescription drug misuse, uh, many of the other topics that, that Richard mentioned earlier. Uh, just some terrific uh, resources uh, on that website. And then in the Oregon uh, website, which I don't think pulled up, but I did want to just mention that in addition to being an expert uh, site uh, grantee, uh, they have some wonderful uh, resources around billing and reimbursement and the integration of that into their EPIC um, uh, electronic health record system, which I think is uh, really very useful. Um, so that's a delight to see a tour uh, of that and can really give you some concrete steps on how to, to integrate uh, into your own system. 
And then I think the, the others that we have, some of the other websites we've listed, have been very specific to certain types of settings. So you have some that are very specific to primary care, if that's a setting you're in. Um, in the ED, for example, the Yale New Haven, uh, 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 the Yale University site, and the Boston University site, and the, the BNI uh, Art, um, uh, that institute, and the work that they're doing at, at, um, in Massachusetts. And then I think the other one I just wanted to mention is those who are really interested in the integration of motivational interviewing in, in within the expert framework, um, the go-to resource there is motivationalinterviewing.org. A lot of resources and training resources, but you can link to the MINT, the M-I-N-T network of trainers from around the country that are close to you that could come and, and help. And many of, there are some there that also do um, um, train in expert and in motivational interviewing. So we mm -hmm. could certainly help link you there. Yeah, and we we know I know there's many expert experts on here, and we. If we didn't list your site, I'm, our apologies. We just yeah. wanted to, a smattering or a good example of the broad spectrum. I think almost all of the state grantee sites have wonderfully developed expert web pages with a wonderful materials, very detailed materials. So Absolutely. hopefully our portal will encompass everything and, and also we'll be able to disseminate it through our cross collaborations. So I know, Melva, we need to do the poll. So why don't we do the polls and then we'll go back to the question on board, but um, we basically wanted to and have some guidance from you guys who had an interest in participating in this webinar on some things you'd like to see, and we also want to know where you're coming from because we had an audience, NORC had an audience, so we, and now we're creating a new audience for the National Expert, so um, we are getting your comments, and if we don't address them at the, at the very end, we will get to them and email you back. And uh, I think basically our overall question is, what questions do you have for us? But what would you like us to address as a national expert ATTC? And I see in some of the question panels that you did, you know, address that, um, and we appreciate some of the suggestions and feedback, and look for more. So, Melva, do you want to go ahead and launch the first poll? And we'll do the polls, and then we'll get back to the questions board and the webinar at twelve. Sure. This is the uh, first poll question. And it is, what is your experience with IRETA? Um, there are two choices. I have worked with IRETA as the Northeast ATTC. I am new to IRETA and the expert ATTC. What I will do now is I will launch the question. And we'll give you uh, a moment to respond. Now, IRETA, I'll just explain a little bit. IRETA is the parent organization that has the uh, Technology Transfer Center grant. And so, as I said, our listserv has primarily been for our regional ATTC and people working with IRETA, but now we have a broader audience. So we did want to understand how you understood us and how you come, your experience to us. So we'll go ahead and I see the polls in progress. And about 61% has voted, so we'll give it a few more seconds and get your feedback on that. Okay, we are up to 70%. Uh, I'll just give it a little bit more time, and then I'll close it and share the results. Okay. We only have <clears throat> we have five minutes, so we'll be mindful of that. Okay, I think you can go ahead. Okay, and thirty nine percent said they have worked with IRETA as the Northeast ATTC. Sixty one percent said I am new to IRETA and the Esper ATTC. Yeah. Okay. Did, okay, well, let's go to the next one. Okay. If you have worked with us in the past, how? And the, go ahead and launch it.
read it, launch it, and read it. Okay. Launch, so we don't have time. All right. All right, why don't we go ahead and launch the others one. You can share this really quickly if you'd like. So we can see that we have a smattering of how people accessed our products and before, so thank you guys for that feedback. Go ahead with the next one. Okay. What card services would you be interested in? Choose all that apply. Registry of National ESPAR Trainers, online learning and commu communities, on-site technical assistance, web resources, practice standards for various professionals, teaching videos, and or an ESPAR online course. We thank you guys. This helps us as we're crafting how we're going to be doing communications as the new National Esper ATTC. This gives us guidance and, you know, we'll probably issue a survey like this again through a listserv so we can get feedback. We want to know what you guys think would be most valuable. So, Malva, can you share this result and then we will go to the final poll, I believe. Uh, Fifteen percent voted for the Registry of National Expert Trainers, 13 percent mm -hmm. online learning communities, 8 percent on-site technical assistance, 29 percent web resources, practice standards for various professionals, and 35 percent teaching videos and or an expert online course. Okay, thank you guys. All right, I think this is our, is this our last poll or do we have? Be our last poll question. Go ahead. What expert topics are relevant to you? Choose all that apply. Expert in hospitals and trauma centers. Expert for the military. Expert in pregnancy slash FASD prevention. Expert in prescription drug misuse slash opioid prescribers. And expert in education systems. Okay, I think we captured that. I want to get us out on time. We were going to, uh, Tracy, we didn't get that last question. I don't know why that last question didn't make it to the poll. So we weren't able to ask specifically about EAP, criminal justice, and CYF settings. But again, this is a nice snapshot for us. We thank you for your feedback. Melvin, you just want to share the last result, and we'll start answering questions. Um, but we'll, you know, from time to time survey you again and we would appreciate your time because we really do, when we're crafting our work, look for your feedback and suggestions. So uh, let's see here. Let's go to some of the questions in the panel from the questions panel that uh, you guys have been submitting. And we'll pick up a few right before we are ending. We're a little over time, so my apologies. Um, let's see. Somebody asked about the ENA expert training. Um, I am familiar with that. It's wonderful. I think it is timely still. So that's a definitely a good Emergency Nurses Association. I have a wonderfully developed training video. It is still very relevant. I think you can continue to use that. Uh, somebody suggested, is there a contact list for future collaboration between projects? That's an excellent idea. and We'll definitely look at implementing that um, because we do believe in collaborating across systems and not duplicating. Uh, let's see. Uh, there was a comment that, um, you know, we will take that in the feedback. I did address a question about a pro graduate professional programs or undergraduate programs, and we'd like to see that grow even more. Um, to medical schools. I know some might be doing some work at medical school level, um, social work. We'd like to see that expand. 
yes, we will send a certificate of attendance. We are going to issue NADAC credits. Um, how about a section on our website with ongoing expert projects around the country? That's a very outstanding suggestion. Um, we could definitely implement something like that. Uh, let's see, Tracy, I don't know if you could see the panel. Is there any others that you really want to address? Here's one about, does all of your professional behavioral health specialists attend training and motivational interviewing? And I can't say across every expert project, yes, but I would absolutely suggest that that is a foundational principle and spirit of expert, and that as many people that you can get engaged in using motivational interviewing, the better. Yes, I think it's about bringing the two, the two together in a way that really works for your setting, and I think that's important to keep in mind is um, the depth and breadth of motivational interviewing may not be appropriate in many of these settings where they're implementing. They, can't, they don't do that level of motivational interviewing, but the core principles and strategies that are used in the communications right. and so forth, I think, are very um, uh, uh, key to having that kind of conversation. Um, a couple other things that people addressed, and then we'll end it, about cost savings in various settings. There are some cost-saving studies, and I know that Colorado has done some cost-saving work. And um, in the ER settings, there's some you know, articles in the literature about that. So that would definitely be something that we would address as a resource that we push out there. And, something we want to advance in the strategic plan to demonstrate its effectiveness from a cost savings perspective amongst a variety of settings. IRETA stands for the Institute for Research, Education, and Training in Addictions, and we are a nonprofit organization. Uh, and I think, let's see, uh, yes, the polls, I just realized that it doesn't allow for more than one response, so thank you guys for the feedback. But So we will probably ask for, um, like, a, we said it was a snapshot and we appreciate your feedback on how we could communicate with you guys but we can further survey our audience we would participate appreciate your time to participate in the survey so um, we will end the webinar here we really do appreciate all of the feedback that you guys have given us uh, we think that it is outstanding to have this kind of support from you know across the country but also from um, experts out there and people who want to start it with us with sincere, you know, intent, uh, intent on implementing it. So thank you both, all of you, and thank you Tracy and Melva, and we'll end the webinar and get back to those who we couldn't get back to offline through email. Thank you, and thank, every, thank you to everyone for attending. We really appreciate okay. your participation. And thank everyone for attending. As I said earlier, there will be PowerPoint presentations and other additional materials sent to you, including a certificate for NADAC credits. Thank you so much for viewing. Have a good afternoon. Yeah, I'm trying to get a snapshot on all the questions.